Uh, Luke we John, how have your friends and family reacted to the stands you've made? Ooh, uh, my parents have become a lot more radical. They've jumped on board. Um, Great. Grandparents are happy that I'm not using their last name. <laughs> uh, tell us about your most empowering experience in the climate movement. I'd say the most recent strike. 80,000 people out in Auckland streets just standing there surrounded by all those people supporting you and giving that speech that, that empowered me. How important do you think collective action on climate is right now? It's all, it's all we've got. It's all we've got. It's the power of one. It's all of us banding together. There's more of us than there are of those indecent folks who are making money out of our, our own you know, the destruction of the planet. Um, just know that you have the power and if we get together we can mobilise incredible change for good. We can have, our kids can have happy, safe, stable futures. Okay, how has learning about the climate crisis changed you? I think the main way that it's changed me is that in everything I do I'm now thinking about like the impact this will have and I know that Personal change isn't what's needed, but you still feel guilty if you like oh, yeah. eat a hamburger, jump on a plane, Drink all of that stuff. Of tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard you say that that individual action isn't what's needed. Tell me why you said that. So I don't want to downplay the importance of individual action because if you like have your keep cup, your honey wrap, whatnot, for one thing that gets you thinking about it all the time, which is only good, and it also gets all your friends seeing that, your family, so it's contagious. It mm -hmm. spreads like that, but. The reason why I say we can't rely on individual action is because I'm not happy with this idea that's pushed by the people that pollute. This idea that it's your fault that we have climate change because you ate a hamburger or whatnot. What I think needs to happen is that everyone needs to be making the right choices. But the only way you get a whole society to be quickly making the right choices is if it's easier to do that. So if you've got to go to work in the morning, if the train is faster, is more convenient and is cheaper than your car, you're always going to train, but it's not. Abigail asks, what do you think makes people feel scared to take action and what would you say to them? Join us. I would say join us. It is scary. It's even scary for us, you know, it's, if you're if you're well known. You get, you get a bit of heat, man. There's some blowback, but fuck it. We don't have time to be precious about ourselves anymore. Like, it's time to be badass. Hello. Andresa says, I really want to help the world, but I don't know where I can start. What was your very first step? I started by supporting um, Greenpeace in the 80s after the Rainbow Warrior bombing, which happened in my town. And the French government, thank you very much. What are you, uh, you got any actions planned before Christmas, Luke? I think Greenpeace has some actions planned before Christmas, so oh, right. keep your ears open for those ones. We've got to get everyone out here. So we need, you know, a bunch of normal, pe normal Joes like us. Exactly. We're going to join together with uh, our climate strikers, with Ewe, with Extinction Rebellion, and with Greenpeace, mm. and we're going to uh, roll out some really cool things. Can't tell you about it, but stay tuned <laughs> uh, to find out what's on, on the, the cards. cards. <laughs>